Hello traders, Cousin Vinny coming to you from the closingprint.com with the S&P 500 closing nearly 24% off of the January high. We see a double bottom and a potential for a bounce. So we'd like to cover some stocks that we're looking at this week. In addition to being cautiously optimistic, we're also looking for stocks that have some downside convexity or protection if the markets do drop off dramatically this week. Looking for ETFs and stocks that are showing relative strength, as well as stocks that were up on volume. Last week, we have a few down below from MarketSmith, the top 10, including some stocks from the IBD 50 that we've traded from time to time, like SITE, the Wisdom Tree Bloom, which is an exchange traded fund seeking results corresponding to the Bloomberg Index. You can see that that's moved higher. It's still in the buy zone up to about 32 and currently about 3% above its pivot breakout zone. The SPYC is also an ETF that seeks to track a large cap U.S. equity market and apply a convexity option overlay strategy. We can see that we're at a double bottom. Relative strength line is starting to climb. We're looking for price action to move higher next week. Remembering that this is protected to a certain extent for downside moves with this convexity option overlay strategy. So if the markets do bounce this week, we could participate while still having a protective hedge or option strategy that helps protect for downside risk. Be sure to check with your investment advisor to see if this is appropriate for your portfolio. As we consider investments going forward from the double bottom on Friday, we may or may not take a position in some of these ETFs. We just wanted to highlight them as things that we're looking at into the weeks ahead, into the October OPEX. SPYC has a gross expense ratio of 0.53 and a net expense ratio of 0.28%, which equates to about $280 expense over one year period on $10,000 invested. We're looking at stocks, especially in the grocery and food related industry groups. We have Grocery Outlet Holdings Corp sitting on top of the 200 period moving average. Its relative strength line started climbing last week as the markets were moving lower. We moved up from 90 up to 94 in the week. Relative strength line climbed from 90 up to 94 during the week. We can see decent earnings of a dollar per share 2022, increasing to a dollar 19 per share in 2023 as the world deals with potential shortages in food output due to the Ukraine Russia conflict. Grocery Grocery Outlet Holdings owns and operates over 415 discount stores in the U.S. and plans to operate and plans to open 36 new stores in 2021 and planned to open 36 stores in 2021. I don't know what the plan is for 2022, but earnings are increasing with the company first reporting a profit in 2016 and increasing every year. Since then, except for 2021, fund ownership sponsorship has increased from 400 to 478 in the latest quarter, with resistance clearly overhead at about 46. We're looking for accumulation to increase with a return on equity of about 9% and a cash flow of $1.58 per share. We're looking for that EPS growth rate of 42% to continue climbing going forward as the stock trades with a beta of 0.42 versus the S&P 500 with its competitors in the space BJ's Wholesale, Dollar Tree, Ollie's Bargain Town, Dollar General and Five Below. Additional stocks in the food category CalMain produces shell eggs that are distributed in the southwest, southeast and mid-Atlantic states Looking for a follow through this week. Nice cup and handle pattern breaking out above 60 with a breakout level at 60.05, 10 cents above this pivot. We're currently 5% above that pivot over the last 
11 trading days. CalMain also reports earnings after the close on Tuesday the 27th, so be aware of that. Be very interested to see what their earnings look like as many investors are looking for disappointing earnings going forward, especially in the growth stock sector. General Mills reported earnings last week on Wednesday. We gapped up, the stock followed through, and then started to flag. We're looking for this pullback to break out to hold the company reported first quarter August 2022 earnings of $1.11 per share on revenue of $4.7 billion. The consensus earnings estimate was for a dollar, so they beat by 11 cents. Revenue grew at 3.9% on a year-over-year basis, with the company expecting earnings of $4.02 to $4.14 per share on revenue of $20 billion at year-end. Kellogg also bounced in that news. Relative strength line has been climbing. The company estimated to earn $4.13 per share for the year. 2023 forecasted to increase by 4%, just below a pivot level and a buy zone at 75, with Kellogg 2% from its pivot in 38 days. We're looking for a follow through. Earnings are scheduled for the first week of November. Lamb Wesson Holdings, which produces and distributes frozen potato, sweet potato, appetizers, and vegetable products to restaurants, does have earnings in 10 days. Looking for a break above this pivot around 82 to 84 in the short term. Hopefully, earnings are strong. So we'll be watching these food-related companies moving forward. Lamb Wesson showing up on the Blue Dot Scan with earnings of $2.08 estimated for this year, increasing next year to $2.80 at 35% increase in 2024, an increase of 34%, $3.76 per share. We're looking for that composite rating and EPS rating to continue growing. Additional food-related stocks, J.M. Schmucker, looking for a breakout. It's on the IBD scan and also a scan that looks for stocks that are near a pivot breakout zone. So we're looking for Schmucker to take out that 145 buy point this week. Relative strength line is forecasting a potential move as it's showing unusual strength as the markets move lower. With the company still forecasted to make at least $8.46 per share next year. This year, $8.88, a growth rate of 4%, composite rating of 91, and an accumulation distribution rating of B+. I like anything better than C, telling me that institutions are picking up shares. With the most recent quarter reporting, 1,694 portfolio managers managing positions and smuckers, 22 less than we saw in the March quarter of this year. Still Smucker showing a cup and handle, looking for the breakout above this pivot, 146.84. And as Investors Business Daily pointed out two weeks ago, packaged food stocks moved into the top 20. Eli Lilly, also a stock that we traded last week, looking for a follow through this week as the 50 day remains resistance, the red line overhead. We're looking for a break above the 320 pivot and then 325 which would give us a potential test of 52 week highs at 335.33 with Eli Lilly leaping nearly 5% on Thursday following positive drug news and an analyst upgrade the drug giant has a 335.43 flat base buy point with a potential trend line entry level also just above the 50 day line if the markets do bounce on Monday. Okay, traders, that's a half a dozen stocks and ETFs that we're looking at this week as potential trades if the markets do manage to bounce this week. Take care. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.
Okay, traders, that's a half a dozen stocks and ETFs that we're looking at this week as potential trades if the markets do manage to bounce this week. Take care. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.